This video is um, going to be about ESR meters or equivalent series resistance meters that their main function is to measure the equivalent series resistance of capacitors. And if you do much work, repair work, or building circuits nowadays, if you don't have an ESR meter, you better get one. Especially um, with uh, switch mode power supplies today running at some of them are, you know, hundreds of kilohertz. They put quite a demand on capacitors. And um, in the past, these were fairly expensive. You can measure ESR with an oscilloscope and a function generator, but it's not real convenient to do it that way. But the cost of them has come down recently, and you can get some pretty good ones. This one here, the DE5000, is probably the one I use most. It's pretty nice. It measures a bunch of different parameters of capacitors and inductors, resistance. Here's one I built from a kit many years ago. This one, uh, these two are digital, this one's analog. This one I built from scratch to use these things. For instance, this one, you shut the leads together, you zero them out, and then you measure the ESR across the capacitor. 0.32. This is a, what is it? Sex, Sam, Samzon. 220 at 200 volts. Wow. This one is a little more sophisticated. This one you can use four wire leads, Kelvin connection, a little better. You have to be careful with these two because inductance will affect the readings. ESR is affected by both inductance and temperature. So, for instance, here you wouldn't want to have coiled leads on here. These are, of course, shielded all the way to the end. But anyway, th this video is mainly about this one here. This is one I built many years ago. This was out of a article I read in Poptronics back in, I think, 2001. I think the July issue. And it was basically built with junk parts. This is an old Simpson meter I got out of something I can't remember. The only thing I think I bought here was a battery and a TL081 quad op amp. And um, anyway, to use this one, put it at a level here so it's easier to see. To use this one, of course, you turn it on and you short the leads together and then you zero the meter. And then you can read ESR on the scale here. And I've got it calibrated up to 40 volts. Beyond that, it doesn't matter because it's junk. One of these is a real bad one here. I think this one. Yeah, this one barely moves. This is out of that last video I did. Um, I had uh, that power supply. That's sister and downer supply. Okay, this one is that that cap was actually good. Where's the other one here? This one is basically a real high resistance. The needle's just barely moving, you can see it. Now if you measure this thing, of course a good cap will measure pretty low. If you can make the leads hit. I need to make an adapter so I can uh, plug in. I've got some banana binding posts here. I can. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Now, if the capacitor is shorted, there's an LED here that comes on to let you know that it's shorted. And that's how you distinguish between a good cap with low ESR and a shorted cap. If this doesn't come on, it's not shorted. But you can also use this to check uh, low ohms. For instance, you could check relay contacts, switch contacts, PC board traces on it. I suppose I could uh, have expanded this out a little more. Instead of going up here, I could have had it like 0.5 here, 1, 2. But generally, if the cap's 
come up below 0.5, usually they're pretty good. But you can build one of these. They're pretty easy. This is, uh, in fact, the bud box. This is a scrap bud box out of some piece of equipment I scrounged. Got the binding post. Here's a, the uh, on-off buttons built into the pot. LED. And an old, I think this is a Simpson meter, if I believe. And then I just uh, put it in a box. Don't use this much anymore. But anyway... You need an ESR meter, and if you don't want to buy one, build one. Get a TLO84 or TLO81 quad op amp, and the rest of the, you know, 2N3904s and 6s, they're, you know, you can buy them 50 of them for a buck. And uh, if you got an old meter in your junk, which I got <laughs> too many, thousand, I don't know. I've been collecting analog meters for 50 years, so I got a bunch of them. I made a, a scale here. There's an overlay I made that this was uh, 0 to 200 microamps, and I just made a different scale and calibrated it using external components here. So, anyway, if you want to build one of these, go to Poptronics July of 2001, and there's a good article in there. And uh, there is an uh, error in the schematic. So you might want to also check out the September issue. They um, they corrected it. Anyway, if you're interested in how this thing works, I will show you a schematic and I give you a brief description how it works. I'm not going to get into what ESR is. It's internet's full of that stuff. If you want to learn more about capacitor ESR, just Google it or start page it like I do. <laughs> and um, you get all the information you need. But there's no reason not to have an ESR meter nowadays. Anyway, um, next I will show the circuit diagram. Stand by for that. Here's the schematic of the ESR meter that I built. This is based on the article in Poptronics in July of 2001. It's based around a TLO84 quad op amp and there's a couple transistors and other components in here it's a fairly simple circuit starting here with IC1A the first section of the TLO84 there's a 9 volt battery transistor battery connected across this series string of R1 and R2 and normally you would see plus 9 and zero across the battery. But what happens here, there's negative feedback from the output of this op amp to the inverting input. So what that does, it creates a virtual ground at pin three at this point here. So you end up having plus 4.5 and minus 4.5 here. So you have your uh, dual polarities for the op amp. And if you look at the TL084 data sheet you can see here pin 4 is plus VCC pin 11 is minus VCC. IC1B is configured as an acetable multivibrator. The output here produces an 8 volt peak to peak square wave at 100 kilohertz and that's applied to Q1 which is an NPN of 3904 and that drives the base of Q2, a PNP 2N3906. And going through its emitter, the 4.5 volts here is switched on and off at 100 kilohertz. So at the collector of Q2, you have a 4.5 volt 100 kilohertz signal that's applied down here to this bridge circuit made up of R9, 10, 11, and 12. So at this point, 4.5 volts goes through, you can see two dividers here, 1K 22 ohms, 1K 22 ohms. So 4.5 volts here is divided, and you have 100 millivolts at this point, and a 100 millivolts at that point. And this point is applied through a 1K resistor to pin 9 of IC1C. 
and the junction of 11 and 12 is applied through a 1K to the non-inverting input of IC1C. The reference signal is applied across the right side of the bridge and the uh, non-inverting input will always see that signal. The inverting input though, if you look over here at the junction on this side is connected to the probes and the probes go between this point and ground. You have two diodes, D1 and D2, and their purpose is to protect the circuitry if there's a charge on any of the capacitors you connect across the input. Um, normally, they would not be uh, forward biased because the signal is too low to forward bias these, these diodes. Since this is a square wave, its average average voltage here would be 50 millivolts. The output of IC1C drives both this circuit, which has a transistor Q3, Q3 at 23904, that drives an LED, which shows a shorted condition. Either shorting the leads together or a shorted capacitor will illuminate this LED, which is red on my unit. It's also applied to this uh, last section, IC1D, and then of course that drives the output meter. It's rectified, filtered by C5, goes through a calibration pot here, and then through this meter. I used a 200 microamp meter. I didn't have a 100 microamp meter, but it seems to work okay. Okay, you got two probes here that go across the capacitor. If you leave these probes open, since this level here is too low to bias these diodes, they just are basically out of the circuit. In that case, the bridge is balanced and there's no output on pin 8. And the meter, of course, is going to register 0. So now you connect a capacitor across the probes here and that unbalances the bridge for AC and depending on the ESR of the capacitor the output at pin 8 will will vary and drive the meter accordingly here if you short the leads together that will drive the meter to full scale and that's when you calibrate the meter you short the leads together and then you adjust the calibration pot for a full scale indication on the meter. At the same time, when you do that, the bridge is unbalanced for DC also, so pin 8 will drive Q3, which turns on the LED, the red LED. So either a shorted capacitor or shorting the probes together will illuminate the LED. A good capacitor connected across the probes will drive the meter full scale. In other words, if the ESR was zero, which it won't be, but if it was zero, it would drive the meter full scale, which is where you set the uh, the circuit here during calibration you short the probes and then you adjust calibration for a full scale on the meter so then when you connect your capacitor across this point the higher the ESR the less deflection this meter will will move towards full scale and then the meter is calibrated in resistance here so that um, a good capacitor should be full scale now if the capacitor is shorted, not only will the meter read full scale, but it will illuminate the red LED so you can tell the difference between a very low ESR capacitor and a shorted capacitor. That's the purpose of the, the LED light. 
I built this uh, circuit using just parts in my junk box at the time. I did buy the IC. I didn't have a quad TLO84, but everything else I had. The meter was a surplus um, meter that I pulled out of a piece of equipment. Something else I didn't mention, a lot of the new DVMs have a capacitance range where you can actually measure capacitance. But you can't measure ESR, although I bet you you'll be finding some of the newer ones will come out so you can do it. reason is these measure using DC, and you can't measure ESR with a DC meter. You've got to use uh, AC, and, and, the, and uh, the one I built here, it runs at 100 kilohertz. So you could measure a shorted cap, and you could, I suppose you could measure leakage current here. They've got a microamp range with a power supply. You could measure leakage, but to measure ESR, you need an ESR meter. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, catch you in the next one. Bye for now.